Ooh. Ooh. Fox, the new home of Thursday Night Football. I see that. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that the famous Fox gang of, you know, Bradshaw and Jimmy Johnson and Howie Long, does that mean that they'll do the pregame as well on Thursday, that they'll come in early? Spend three days in L.A.? Is that how it's going to work out? I, I, a lot of questions right there. That's kind of interesting. I guess we didn't see, you know, the Cower and Gonzalez and all of those guys, uh, you know, giving us uh, their takes, if you will, uh, on Thursday when it was on NBC. But that's, that's kind of interesting right there. And does that mean, you know, who's going to be the number one crew there? Okay, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. Hey, everybody, it's Marky e. Bilson, your voice of choice for a new generation of Tri-City Sports fans. The name of the program is Tri-City Sports Now, and we own the Tri-Cities because we have the best guests and the hardest-hitting opinions in the market. And we're going to be doing, we do a few things. This is not... Try not to be so stuffy sports show. Oh, we want to break the story. Don't get me wrong. We're doing that. But much like that Fox pregame where they will have a chuckle, if you will, during the ball game. CBS, not so much. You know, Terry Bradshaw better at parties, I suppose, especially when they're in. Where'd they go this time on Better Late Than Never? Uh, Monaco, was that it? Okay, I'm looking for my pen here, if you're watching on Facebook Live, yeah, because I've noticed that when I can wave this pen around on Facebook Live, it makes my points even more. I'm here, you know, you know like a pointer to a blackboard. I'm the school teacher here. All right. Today's show, we're going to be talking to a gentleman named John Hooper, otherwise known as SoCon John. Hey. Our competition said, we can't get him, but uh, he comes on this show. Or did they actually say they couldn't get him, but they were did, they were like, I, I guess he was coming on, he wasn't coming on, I don't know what the situation... Anyway, he's written a nice story about ETSU basketball and mid-major madness. In fact, uh, ETSU basketball, they've been the talk of a lot of basketball websites. Uh, two stories this week on mid-major madness... One about the Bucks, the other about their, you know, the the SoCon and uh, being a one bid league, and could they get to, you know, who would be the sleeper to knock off ETSU? Favored by TeamRankings.com, by the way, to win the rest of their games until at least uh, the SoCon tournament. But I can't see if they win the rest of their games. ETSU not being favored to win the rest of their games there. Mentioned this, number 58 RPI. At least they were beginning of the uh, week by uh, RealTimeRPI.com. Then we had the note that Gonzaga ranked number 15th in the country. They're number 57 in real-time RPIs. Consider that. All right. Uh, on today's program, we'll be talking to John Hooper. Also, I got a lot of Super Bowl stuff are we going to lose another golf course locally? We may not lose Buffalo Valley, but, you know, it's a week to find a buyer, basically. So, or someone who's going to lease it. Rob Manfred's at it again. He wants to do all sorts of different things to baseball. Uh, I think they're still going to use four, three bases, one home plate, a bat, and a ball. I'm not sure. Uh of course, Kirk Cousins, that's been the, uh, where's he going to go now that the Redskins have signed Alex Smith? By the way, Redskins, Paul, uh, Roger Goodell saying, no, I don't think the Redskins will change their name. You know, all this talk about the NFL being under fire, and they have been from both sides of the political spectrum, but I will tell you, after what the Indians are doing to, Cleveland Indians are doing to Chief Wahoo, I mean, the fact that the Redskins are going to keep their name at least for the foreseeable future, under Dan Snyder, I think that's going to win him a lot of fans. I mean, I and what I mean by that is the NFL. It's not going to say, you know, 
Hmm, we've got to do away with, uh, you know, baseball logos and caricatures and nicknames and just, you know, whatever the flavor of the day to be offended by. However, quite the legitimate sports columnist, someone I would not have expected to make this comment, has come out and said Notre Dame should change their nickname. However, PETA. People with ethical treatment of animals say that it would be in the best interest of the University of South Carolina, and I suppose Jacksonville State as well, to no longer call their teams the Gamecocks. Barbaric, you know, all that. South Carolina actually gets that name. Thomas Sumter, great Revolutionary War general from South Carolina, was known as the Fighting Gamecock. That explains the nickname right there, but... Uh, lots of stuff going on. I mean, look at the stories I got. <laughs> got a lot of, is Phil Fulmer going to stay as the athletic director of Tennessee indefinitely? I'll talk about that. But I'm going to give you something to lead off this show that I promised that I would lead off this show on. And that's giving you the inside dirt on recruiting rankings. Rivals, Scout, 24-7, those guys. National Signing Day comes up in a week, uh, February 7th. I guess, what, eight days then, supposedly. So we'll hear a lot about recruiting coming up. I don't really want to get into it because these are anonymous people coming to UT. I've talked a, a bit about it. If there's a local guy, sure. You know, Jalen Adams going to the Citadel, fine. You know. But we're going to hear a lot about recruiting rankings as well. Where does Tennessee place? Where does Virginia Tech place right now? As we speak right now, I think uh, they're both in the top 20. If memory serves, Tennessee is currently rated by rivals number 16 and Virginia Tech number 19. What does it all mean? It doesn't mean much, folks. Take those recruiting rankings with a grain of salt. Okay, I will say that if I'm a Georgia Bulldogs fan, I'm happy that right now Georgia is ranked number one by rivals. I think there's probably more positives than negatives about that. But the thing of it is, are they really bringing in the number one recruiting class? We won't know for another four or five years now, will we? And I don't have to tell you that. You should have enough common sense to know that. Full disclosure, I want to tell you, I've written for both rivals and scouts. And I think 24-7 as well. Now, I didn't evaluate, you know, talent. I wasn't at the camps with my stopwatch. I didn't do that stuff. So I wrote features about the players being recruited, that sort of thing. I asked, you know, where they were leaning to sign with. I got personality profiles, a little bit of background about the high schools that they played for, you know, that sort of thing. You should not take a whole lot of stock in, in these college recruiting rankings. Okay, give you an example, and I've talked about this on the show. What was Tennessee's record last year in football? Four and eight, right? Worst record, theoretically. I mean, I know that winning percentage in the old days, there were a few that were worse than 333, but yeah, four and eight, most losses in a season. Okay. Central Florida, UCF, Golden Knights were undefeated, right? Okay, let's go back to 2014. This year, seniors, redshirt juniors, that sort of thing. Rivals, 2014 class, four years ago. This year, seniors and redshirt juniors. Vols are 4-8, and eight, UCF undefeated. Remember, four years ago, recruiting class, Vols number 5, UCF number 73. You see where there might be a flaw here. Flaw in the slaw, as Roscoe P. Coltrane used to say. Now, it's common criticism of these rankings that many players are given their star ratings, four, five, three, you know, whatever it is, two, because of the colleges that have recruited them, or how many are. I'll give you a case in point. Journey Brown. Now, if you remember... Three years ago, 2015, you may remember a high school football game where the final score was 2015 
was 107 to 90. Meadville, the Bulldogs, defeated Dubois in Pennsylvania. Okay. And the final score, 107 to 90. You always thought Pennsylvania, you know, Penn State linebackers would be stopping people. Well, okay. Journey Brown was Meadville's running back in that game. He rushed for 722 yards. He set a Pennsylvania State record that had been on the book since 1925, when a player from my former hometown of Shippensburg, actually, uh, scored 66 points. Junior Brown scored 68 points in that game, that 107-90 to 90 football game. Okay. He also was recorded as the fastest man in Pennsylvania. He ran a 6-8, 60-yard dash. He ran, he was not a small guy. I mean, he had good running back size at uh, 5'11", 194. That's, you know, legitimate. But he went to a smaller school. Meadville, PA, has about 13,000 people. That's where Sharon Stone is from, incidentally. And he wasn't a straight-A student. So Brown wasn't heavily recruited. Only four schools actually pursued him. Penn State, which is where he is now, plus Syracuse Temple and FBS Duquesne. Frankly, I'm a little stunned by that. I, You know, if you're the fastest man in PA, I would have thought that, you know, other schools, including Pitt, would have been after him, but hey, you know. What was a star? We're talking about the fastest man in the state. And by the way, not the fastest man in Vermont, not the fastest man in Alaska. We're talking about the fastest man in Pennsylvania, one of our more populated states here, you know, known for producing football players. He got three stars. Because he only had four offers. They didn't look at the stopwatch. They didn't look at what happened on the field. They looked at, well, geez, I, I guess uh, not that many schools are interested in him. He can't be that good. Junior Brown might start at Penn State this year, by the way. Three stars. When you consider that. So you got to ask yourself, who rates these players in the recruiting rankings, right? In the case of Brown, a guy named Alan Friedman. Now, these are his credentials to evaluate college football talent. This is his background, folks. He worked as a ticket office intern for the Washington Redskins. Oh, and Carolina Cup Racing, the Carolina Cup Racing Association. He also was an intern in their ticket office as well. This lasted a grand total of four months with the Redskins, four months with Carolina Cup Racing Association and what being a ticket office intern for Carolina Cup Racing Association has to do with evaluating college football talent, I'll never know. He also interned with a law firm for four months. This is who evaluates the players in the mid-Atlantic region for rivals. It should be mentioned that Friedman did spend, according to his resume, Four months as a coaching staff assistant at James Madison. Not an assistant coach, mind you. Someone who assisted the assistant coaches. <laughs> Did that for four months. Interned at Rivals for 14 months. Then he got a position as an MC for the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. He was an MC. Wasn't a coach. Didn't recruit the players. He was an MC. And then he became a recruiting analyst for Rivals. Quite the background, huh? Now, Chad Simmons has been evaluating college football talent in the South, likes of Yahoo, Scout, these guys. He's been doing it for 13 years. You know what he did before that? Immediately before he became a recruiting analyst. And keep in mind, no, there wasn't work in sports. There wasn't assisting the assistants at James Madison for four months. You know what he did? He designed roads and bridges for an asphalt paving company. And then he went into college football talent evaluation. This guy's a three-star player. This guy's a four-star player. So if you thought perhaps the uh, people evaluating the talent on your favorite recruiting website 
had a background in coaching, maybe media, you know, looking at ball players for a living before they went and did this. Think again. One evaluator I know, and I worked for him. I didn't think much of him, but he famously told the Washington Post he could tell whether a player could make it or not in 15 seconds. I want you to consider that. The recruiting rankings, this guy said, yeah, it takes me 15 seconds to do it. What in-depth analysis he must deliver. It's also believed programs with large followings will get higher recruiting rankings than those who do not, and this is where it affects the Tennessee Volunteers. Because you've got to keep in rivals people subscribing for $10 a month. Now, this would explain why Tennessee, who despite the fact that they've been 62 and 63 the last 10 years, consistently have had recruiting classes ranked in the top 20 since 1929. Or, listen to me, 1929. Might as well be 2009. I'm thinking the stock market crash. But uh, they've had consistently higher recruiting rankings. 21st is the worst recruiting ranking they've had since Phil Fulmer left. Uh, last year, Fulmer, they were 35th, by the way. But tw they were 21st in 2013. That's probably the Vols' best recruiting class of the last 10 years. Josh Dobbs, Josh Smith, Cam Sutton. Those are the players, their last two years at Tennessee, they won 18 and 8. High water mark of the last 10 years for the Vols. And that was the lowest rated class, 21. Do you see where, I, the, the lowest program, right now I saw Baylor, was rated 22nd, and that's probably the only, uh, that's probably the highest rated, quote-unquote, non-glamour, and I know they've gained popularity in RG3 and all that, but, you know, it's where, uh, what, J you know, Jalen Hurd went off to, but uh, you're still looking at a program in Baylor that, you know, that's not going to be drawing 100,000 fans a game. And so all the teams in the top 20 are pretty much known as, you know, teams with big-time followings in college football to whatever degree. Do you see where maybe, just maybe, there's a little bit of, we got to rank these guys high, or, well, he's going to this school to keep that $10 a month coming in. Now, the ratings aren't all flawed. I mean, Alabama is always rated highly, though you got to wonder... If the reason why they are rated highly is because they're actually recruiting players that, yes, the analysts say, those are really good players, or if they kind of have to, what, Nick Saban's after him? Well, he better be a four-star player then, isn't he, at least? You got to wonder about that. All I'm going to say is this. Can we at least agree on this? These recruiting rankings are so flimsy that anybody who is going to attack a recruit on social media, because he didn't sign with my school, which is what happened with Tennessee fans attacking Cade Mays, those fans, they really, really, really need to get a life. Hey, I'm Marky Bilson. Yeah, when we come back, I'm going to tell you, is there going to be another golf course that's going to close locally? Buffalo Valley's been closed all month. There might is there going to be another one? We'll find that out. And then John Hooper, mid major madness. He goes by SoCon John. He's written about ETSU and the SoCon. He'll join me at the bottom of the hour on Tri City Sports Now. Crabtree Buick GMC it means trust. For over 